So we have been talking about taking action here at the bridge for the entire summer. We're going to continue that theme tonight um, with something about um, irrational generosity. What is generosity? Um, where do we even get this, this idea of generosity? And, and why is there sometimes like this negative thought behind it? Like why do we have this perception of negativity around generosity. Uh, I'm hoping that tonight I will be able to open up your eyes into seeing it from a different view. Um, here in a few moments, there's going to be a couple of images that are going to show up on the screen. Um, when I ask for that image to come up, what I'm going to ask from you guys is I'm going to ask you a question. I'm basically just going to say, what do you see? If you think you know the answer to what is on the screen, you'll just raise your hand. You don't need to say anything. Just raise your hand just so I can kind of get an idea of if you actually think you know the answer before I even ask the question about the image. Okay? Go ahead and throw that first ring. All right. What do you see? You think you know. Maybe. Let me ask you a question then. Are the pinwheels moving? If you think they are, raise your hand. If you think they're not, raise your hand. Cool. Look at you guys. No, that is the correct answer. They are not moving. Next image. Do you think you know? How many legs do you think the elephant has? If you think that there are six or more legs, raise your hand. If you think there's six or more, raise your hand. You think, there, you think there's five or less? You think there's three or more? You think it's four? If you think it's four legs, raise your hand. You would be correct. There's only four legs. There's only four legs. Go ahead and throw up the next image. It takes a minute for it to kind of load. If you think you know, raise your hand. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to count all the black dots. When you think you have all the black dots, raise your hand. If you think you have them all, if you think you've counted every black dot, raise your hand. Okay, how many black dots are there? Zero. There are no black dots. If you focus on each dot, you will see that it is white, and every single dot is white. So here's what's so interesting. What's interesting about this is that everybody sees things differently. We all have this different view of different things. And actually, this relates to what we're going to be talking about tonight. Tonight, what I want to do is I want to challenge you to think about the way that you see your life now and consider changing your perspective to see things more clearly. In fact, Jesus talks about this in Matthew 6. And so I want you to pay close attention to what he says about our eyes because this is what sets the stage for tonight. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 6, we're going to be starting in verse 19, Matthew 6, verse 19. It says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, for where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. But I want you to listen to this part. This is the most important part here. The eye is the lamp of the body. The eye is the lamp of the body. The eyes, if the eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. 
If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? This is some powerful, powerful stuff here. I want to go back for just a second and look at the verse where it says, if your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. The Greek word here for healthy is actually implies generous. Basically, it is saying that if your eyes focus in and see the needs of the world, and you recognize that God has called you to do something about it, then your whole body is full of light. So the question you have to ask yourself is this. Do you have eyes to see the opportunities to be generous? How often are you looking for ways to be generous? How often are you leaving your house and asking God to show you ways to be generous to others? Or even just generous to the people within your own circle? Because according to that verse, living generously helps us become light seekers. Light seekers is what God has called us to be. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever gone live on social media, like on any platform. Who's done that? Who's gone live on a platform? Greg does every week. (laughs) Fridays. (laughs) But every week we go live, right? Or somebody's going live on something. Somebody is doing something live. And it's pretty cool, but it's also pretty scary. Why? Because it's raw, right? It's unfiltered. There's no way to record it and back up and, you know, re-say what you were trying to say. Otherwise, you're just going to stumble through it. It's just crazy Um, because it's happening in real time. But going live can be fun, but it actually can be really, really awkward. Uh, Like for me, most people know, I mean, we do, the church does every single week, they do a morning devotional that's live at 730 in the morning. I have missed mine for like a month at this point. Um, (laughs) There's a lot going on student-wise and kids-wise, and I can make all the excuses I want, but anyways. um, Nevertheless, I have, it gets awkward sometimes. Like you're, you're, you, you get live, you're, you're sitting there, and you're waiting, and like one or two people sh- show up, and, but you're looking at yourself. Like it's almost like you're just live with yourself because you can't see anybody else on the other side of the screen, but you see that there's people on, but they're just typing. It just kind of gets weird. Um, and so that can be kind of awkward for you. Or it could be awkward that you go live and you speak for a whole two minutes and then you look down and you realize that nobody's on. <laughs> right? You just, you just said a whole bunch of cool stuff that was going to be earth shattering <laughs> and nobody was there to hear it. It can be awkward. It can be, you know, a little crazy. But I know for some of you, Don't even act like you haven't hopped onto somebody's Instagram live and then hopped right back off. You know who you are and you know you have done it. But let's bring this full circle and let's talk about what a typical day might look like for someone, right? So do we rush through the day doing all the things that we want to do while missing what others need us to do? Or maybe get a little more personal. Do you rush through the day doing all the things that you want to do, but then miss out on what others need you to go? Or maybe go a little even step a little further and a little more personal. Do you rush through the day doing everything that you want to do, but missing out on what God needs you to do? Do we have eyes to see what is happening around us, or are we just focused on ourselves? I mean, think about it. You wake up, you start pawing around looking for the phone, right? Looking around, trying to turn it off if it has an alarm, or you're trying to check it to see who checked your story, or did the friend request get approved, Um, or maybe you're an email person, you're just scrolling through, deleting, you know, you don't want to deal with it. Um... Or maybe you just sleep in as long as you can, just so you don't have to deal with anybody. Or for those who are out of the house, maybe you wake up wishing that mom and dad were there to make you breakfast, 
because now you have to adult and it just sucks to have to do it yourself. Right? It's crazy out there. Maybe you know one of your close friends or a family member, or maybe it is a parent that's having a rough time, but you never even bothered to ask. How many times do we walk past people and we, we visually see that there is something going on that's not right and we say nothing? It's not our problem. It's not our business, right? So then you go to work or maybe you have a class that you have to go to and you rush past everybody uh, so you don't have to socialize. Or maybe you're the opposite. You are the socializing type of person. You rush past everybody to ignore them just so you can find your people, the people you connect with. Bottom line is you're so wrapped up into your world, you're just focusing on you, and when you live like this, it it just becomes your routine. It just forms. But what if I told you that maybe... That when you sleep in and you're only focused on yourself in the morning, it causes a lot of tension between you and your friends or your family or your spouse. Or what if I told you that maybe your friends and family and spouse, or maybe they're just tired and they're just done. They don't need another source of frustration from you having to ask you to do the thing that they've already asked you to do again. Instead of Maybe focusing on yourself. Maybe we should help our friends and our parents and our spouse by cleaning or maybe taking care of breakfast in the morning. Maybe it's taking out the trash or maybe for some of you, it is actually starting to adult instead of just pretending. Maybe that's where we're at. But what if I told you that whenever you zoom past all these people that you don't want to interact with, that you're overlooking the people that God has placed in your life to be a light to? Maybe some of them are hurting, and maybe some of them are feeling alone, and maybe some of them are depressed and they don't feel like that they belong in any circle. It's those people who desperately need maybe some attention or some encouragement. The Scripture is giving us the answer to all of this. The Scripture is saying that you have to have eyes to see what God does. We need to be looking through a different kind of lens. What kind of lens is that? Well, maybe it's time to put away the selfishness the selfish lens, and put on the selfless lens. So what do we do when that happens? Well, we find a need and we fill it. We find a need and we fill it. When we find a need and we fill it, we are training our eyes to be generous. And when we live this way, Jesus says our whole body will be full of light. For you... This might be getting up early and making breakfast for somebody else. It could be using one of the Christmas gifts that maybe you were given when you know that somebody else didn't have anything. Or maybe it's recognizing that giving through the church makes a difference, and so then you step into tithing. Or maybe it's bringing some people into your friend group. Or maybe it's just even reaching out to the people within your friend group and just saying, hey, how how can I pray for you? We're always looking for these big connections and all these things, but sometimes it's just as simple as just saying, is there anything I can pray for you? Is there anything that you need? Whatever it is, You need to know this, that God has called you to find a need and fill it. There are so many ways to be generous to others. If we change what we are seeing now, which is ourselves, to what God is calling us to see, which is others, and God is able to bless us. 
He gives us what we need and what he calls us to do. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. So the question is, are your eyes generous? Do you have eyes to see what God wants you to see? Imagine just for a moment, imagine if your schools or your workplace or your home or maybe the friend group, what would that look like if you had eyes to see what God wants you to see? Imagine how much better your friend group would be or your families would be if we decided to bring that light there. God wants to meet every need and heal every hurt around you, and he wants to do it through you. The problem that we always run into is our willingness. How truly are we willing to be used by God? Or are we still trying to take the control and keep the control of our own lives? So each day, ask yourselves, am I going to be someone who sees a need and fill it or not? 1 Corinthians 13, 11 through 12, it says, when I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Listen close here. Now, when we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but, w- but then when we see anything with perfect clarity, all that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. So the question I want you guys to ask yourselves before you leave tonight is based on what we just talked about, based on the fact that you should have this different lens that you should be looking at others through in this life through. Ask yourselves, what are you seeing now? How do you see others now? Let's pray. Father, thank you uh, for bringing each of us here tonight to open up your word and hear what it is that you want us to hear and you want us to understand. And, and then how do we take that and apply it into our life? How do we have eyes to see others the way that you see them? Guide our, our, our eyes, our thoughts, our heart. We turn that over to you to guide us in a way that is honoring to you that we would see others the way that you do, that we can be a light to others, that we can care for others. Father, bless this, this, uh, these breakouts and let it be fruitful and let us dig deep into what it is that you wanted us to hear tonight and you wanted us to understand and what you wanted us to apply. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.